Hi, it's Mike here again. Uh, we got a 2005 Pontiac Grand Prix here today. Uh, this one is suffering from a coolant leak. Uh, it's one of these things that uh, these 3800s are notorious for. Um, what happens is the owner notices that he's low on coolant, uh, puts more coolant in it, he's low on coolant again, um, and kind of mystified as to why. Uh, what's happening is the coolant is leaking out from the lower intake manifold. Uh, the passage that goes through the alternator bracket where the tensioner pulley is uh, has a plastic elbow that tends to crack and leak. Uh, what happens here is that the coolant slowly drips out and the intake manifold is certainly hot enough at that point, it's right by the block, that the coolant just evaporates and disappears. Uh, this one, uh, the owner verified that it was coming out at that point for me, and uh, I'm going to show you guys how to do the repair. Um, it's kind of involved. Uh, it's not terribly difficult work but uh, it takes a bit of time. You have to remove the alternator, uh, which shares a bracket with the tensioner pulley, and uh, also has passages for the coolant to go back to the radiator hoses, uh, excuse me, the heater hoses. Uh, I'll show that to you. Let's see if we can get a shot of that. Uh, there's the heater hoses. Uh, you can see the alternator here. Um, and uh, the tensioner pulley. Um, then just below that there is a little plastic elbow. Uh, let me turn my light on here. Uh, it's a little plastic elbow there. Uh, and you can see that uh, there is some moisture down on the uh, intake manifold. Um, I've seen this break a couple of times. There is a fix for it. Um, there's a new and improved aluminum elbow that goes there and uh, we're gonna put that on today so let's get started okay the first thing we got to do is to take the coolant reservoir bottle off uh, there's just two 10 millimeter um, stamped nuts that uh, come off on the top and then the bottle just lifts out. Uh, you may wish to drain this bottle first, although uh, I've done this before without emptying it. Um, so this one, let's see, there's not a lot of coolant in it. Oh yeah, there is. Uh, this owner has replaced the coolant with the green uh, coolant and uh, gotten rid of the Dex Cool, uh, which some of you might already know is uh, probably a pretty good idea. Um, I'll remove the bottle and get it out of the way and empty it out. Well, I decided not to empty the coolant bottle out since there was so much coolant in it and I couldn't see any reason to waste it. Uh, we aren't going to have to flush this, although some people might think that's a good idea. Um, really, this is a slow leak, so I don't think the coolant got contaminated. Uh, you can get a much better look of the work that needs to be done down in here. Uh, generally this fuse box doesn't get in the way, but if that needs to be removed, uh, I believe that's just those two stamp nuts also that takes that off. And what we're going to do next is we're going to get that alternator off of there. We're going to start by removing that brace that goes over to the back side of the engine. Uh, you'll have to loosen it up there and uh, take that nut off. I think that's a uh, 15 millimeter there. Uh, then we'll get the alternator out and uh, we'll be able to see a little bit more. Okay, unlike the supercharged car I did this on before, uh, this one has a 10 millimeter um, bolt holding this bracket or this brace for the alternator right there. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and loosen that and see the under, other end of that brace here. Um, and uh, that'll get rid of that for us. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is. Uh, we're going to take the belt off, uh, the ser serpentine belt. Uh, we're going to do that by uh, putting a 15 millimeter uh, socket and uh, you can see I've got my breaker bar here um, on the belt tensioner 
and just lifting the belt tensioner, turning it uh, counterclockwise. Uh, the nut on this, by the way, is uh, reverse thread or left-handed thread, uh, so we won't be breaking the, the nut loose. We won't have to worry about that, but um, we'll be able to take the belt off. Okay, I've got the belt off, and now would certainly be a great time to inspect the belt, make sure there's no cracks in it. Uh, this one looks like it's in pretty good shape. Uh, maybe a little worn. Um, I'm going to leave it up to the owner whether or not to replace this. But uh, I'm just going to move the belt aside. Let's get it out of our way. Let's push it down there. Um, and now we can uh, proceed to remove the alternator. Okay, now we can get a real good look of the uh, rear elbow uh, that you can't really see without taking the alternator off. Uh, that one's hiding right down in there. I haven't seen that one break yet, but I'm sure it's possible. Um, you can imagine the passage leading through this bracket uh, to the heater hoses there. We don't need to take the heater hoses off to do this. Uh, we're just going to pull this bracket loose. Get a good shot of the bracket there. Um, there's fasteners here, um, let's see, there's a few other ones down there, I can see one, uh, I believe there's another one up uh, a little bit farther, but um, we'll get those taken off of there and uh, that bracket will come loose and uh, we'll pull those elbows out and put new ones in, I'll show you that in a minute. Okay, just a word of caution here, um, because this is aluminum, uh, that you're bolting into and the fasteners are probably steel. Um, sometimes they get a little bit galled up and uh, they can get a little bit tight. Uh, don't just reef on them. Work them back and forth until they loosen up. I've got a breaker bar here uh, so I can really feel what I'm doing uh, instead of using an air tool. Um, just rocking it back and forth a little bit and uh, Notice it loosens right up. A very well hidden fastener uh, back here. Right down in this area, right there. I've got my uh, socket extension on there. Um, may not be obvious to you at first. And it obviously has to come off. Okay, well now that we've got all the fasteners out of here, uh, you can see that uh, this bracket is now loose. Actually, the only thing that is holding it is uh, those plastic, oops, my finger, uh, those plastic elbows uh, down there. Now we want to pop those out ever so gently uh, with a screwdriver uh, or some other prying device so that uh, we don't mar the aluminum that they go into. Uh, I want to make sure we don't dig at it or anything because those do need to reseal and aluminum, uh, if it's scratched, it will tend to leak. Okay, well now we can definitely see what's wrong uh, with our plastic elbow. Um, I didn't even do any prying. Uh, you can see the end of it is just blown right out. Uh, and it's cracked uh, where it goes into the, the, uh, uh, the bracket here. Uh, so uh, definitely found the problem. Um, and uh, I'll show you um, give you another shot of this once I get this bracket pulled off. Okay, in another one of these cars that I did, the break in the elbow was uh, not very obvious because it was up in the passage there where the elbow uh, o-ring seals seat to the aluminum. Um, kind of where this one's broken, as you can see this is plastic right here where my fingernail is and that's the aluminum now. Um, so it wasn't obvious at all that it was broken. Uh, this one certainly was. Uh, give you a shot of the, the elbow. Uh, <laughs> there it is there. Um, so you can see uh, where it split here. Probably what happened was that it broke at the O-ring where the uh, plastic is indented for the O-ring to sit and uh, and then split and then the pressure pushed it out and uh, caused this to break but you can see these aren't very strong i just broke it just uh, holding it with my one hand 
Okay, I want to show you the new elbow set uh, that I bought. Uh, as you can see, these are made out of metal, so they'll be considerably stronger and uh, they won't deteriorate like the plastic. Uh, one of the reasons why that plastic broke, it, it wasn't that weak when it was uh, originally designed. Uh, it broke because uh, it deteriorated over time uh, and probably had something to do with uh, you know, 4,000 plus hours this engine has on it uh, and all the heat cycles uh, that the cooling system has gone through. Uh, let me show you what one of those plastic uh, brackets or uh, elbows looks like uh, new. This is, a, this is a new one here. Uh, excuse my junky workbench. This is a, work, a new one here and you can see it's, it's quite a bit stronger. So, uh, you know, the, the one that fell apart in my hand uh, certainly wasn't made that way. Now I also want to give you a shot here of the water pump. Uh, you can see, uh, let's get, get some more light on this. Uh, you can see the water pump quite well uh, right here. Um, you know, on one of these cars, uh, I did take the time to change the water pump. Uh, I think this water pump is probably good. Oh, there's the, there's the piece there that fell off of the uh, broken elbow. Uh, the water pump in this car is okay, so I'm going to leave it alone. Uh, generally, the only thing that goes wrong with these water pumps is they'll either leak, uh, which this one is not, uh, or uh, you'll get some howling, or the um, pulley will become loose. And you can tell if the uh, or it won't spin freely. Uh, this one's certainly okay. Uh, it may have had a water pump at some point in his life, but 143,000 miles for a 3.8 liter GM engine is. Uh, it's pretty young. Uh, I believe these don't even require a tune-up for 100,000 miles. So uh, we're going to go ahead and leave that water pump. And uh, we're just going to clean up down there a little bit and uh, go ahead and reassemble all of this. Okay, so what I've done here is I've taken an ordinary toggle bolt, uh, something like this. Um, and I've put a washer on it and I've put it down into the, I think I got a shot of it, there down into the passage where the old elbow was because I have to pull out what's remaining of that broken elbow without marring the surface of the passage because we need to seal to that with our new O-rings. Uh, so I'm just going to tighten that screw a little bit. Hopefully it'll move just enough that I can uh, uh, start uh, prying on the washer and uh, it'll pop right out. All right, here's another shot of this. As you can see, uh, I was able to get that uh, started and started to come out. Um, all I need to do now is get a pair of pliers on the head of that uh, screw and uh, pull it the rest of the way out. Okay, you can see that uh, pulled right out of there. Um, and uh, all I have to do now is uh, clean up that a little bit. Probably gonna use a little bit of Scotch-Brite just to make sure it's good and clean. Make sure there's nothing um, that'll keep that from sealing. Okay, now you can see that's uh, nice and clean in there. Um, that's the way it should look. Make sure there's no scoring, uh, any pieces left behind of the uh, old O-ring seals or anything like that. That one's ready to go. And we'll just do the other uh, four mating surfaces. Uh, we'll take that elbow out, should be fairly easy, clean that up, and uh, we'll clean that uh, area just off the water pump there that you see, and the uh, one at the base of the intake manifold, which you uh, can't really get a good shot of. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and put the new elbows in. Uh, as you can see, this one has a larger collar on it on one side. Uh, that actually fits down on the water pump, uh, as you can see right here. Um, and the smaller side fits into the alternator bracket. Uh, it does not go there, it goes here. Um, this bracket, which is different still, or this elbow, which is different, uh, fits, has the same size collars, fits into um, the bracket like that. Um, we're going to go ahead and lubricate these O-rings a little bit uh, so that they slide right in and uh, it'll also help keep them uh, from drying out prematurely.
Okay, I lubricated these O-rings with a little bit of pre-diluted coolant. That's what they're going to be in contact with anyway. Um, so that's perfectly safe for them. And uh, they slide uh, surprisingly easy uh, into the area where they're supposed to sit. And now we'll just reposition this bracket. As you can see. Let's get the light on here. That elbow goes right down in there. There's a better shot of it right there. And it kind of takes two hands, but we'll just push this back into place and start bolting it back together. Okay, one thing it's good to point out at this time is uh, when you're putting these fasteners back in, remember this is all aluminum. Uh, it's very, very easy to cross thread fasteners into aluminum. Um, you know, the, uh, if they don't turn by hand or very, very easily with a ratchet, they're probably cross threaded. Um, I've uh, just run them all three in uh, just a little bit by hand just to make sure they turn several times um, easily and then I'm confident they're starting to thread correctly. Uh, then I'll run them all the way in uh, a little at a time on each uh, with uh, hand tools and then we'll tor torque them to spec. Okay, I went ahead and took the time to torque those to the manufacturer specifications which uh, according to uh, what I could find was uh, either 36 or 37 pound feet. I think we can get that uh, close enough. <laughs> Split the difference if you like. Um, let's see, I uh, use my torque wrench here. Um, put it on the bolt and tighten it until it clicks. Don't want to over tighten those because uh, we are going into aluminum there and it would be possible to crack that bracket. Um, and that would be a bad thing. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and put this bolt in here. Uh, a little while ago I had the wrong bolt in. I had this longer one there, but uh, that one doesn't go there. So we put this one in. Uh, that's going to align with this channel and help you get the alternator lined up and in proper position a little bit more easily. Okay, I got the alternator put back. Um, and uh, I wanted to point out um, this brace, uh, don't forget to retighten that 10 millimeter bolt back there. Uh, sorry, nut. Um, and uh, put this nut back. <coughs> okay, we've got the serpentine belt back on. Um, obviously, uh, the routing of that's pretty important. For some reason, uh, unlike most cars, this car doesn't have a routing diagram under the hood. Um, but uh, usually you can find one up here or you know down there someplace. But uh, that's easy enough to find online. Uh, or another good idea would be to uh, jot down how it goes on a piece of paper before you take the car apart. Um, or um, even uh, take a picture of it. Uh, now the only thing left to do is top the car off with coolant. Uh, put the coolant bottle back in place. That's real easy. The bottom of it sits on that stud, uh, this plastic stud that's sticking out here, uh, engages with this slot. Uh, since I had the coolant bottle up higher than the radiator, uh, it's drained into the radiator, which is good because we were pretty low on coolant anyways. Uh, let's go ahead and snap that down and uh, just put those little stamped uh, metal fasteners back on these studs. Uh, little 10 millimeter guys. And, uh... Okay, we've got it running. Uh, I'm just going to let it warm up, build a little pressure up in the cooling system so I can check for leaks. Uh, you know, obviously, we're going to look around the area where those elbows are. I'll give you another look at one of these elbows. Uh, that's one of the old, the other uh, old ones. Um, and uh, let's see, it's kind of a little light down there. It's a lot better than it did, so I think that's probably going to be okay. I'm going to go ahead and let it warm up um, and uh, just make sure it doesn't leak. 
take it for a test drive, make sure it doesn't leak, and then we'll call this one wrapped up.